Good morning. Good morning, Ghost Tribe. Oh, maybe I'm going to stand a little bit. I'm going to say that again. Good morning, Ghost Tribe. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to ask you to stand, please, if you don't mind. And if you are outside, please, uh, I know you're still chatting a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask you to come inside as we are about to start. Okay, so it's, it's been always amazing to come and worship with you guys. And as a team, we are ready. We're excited to worship with you. Um, and that is the purpose for why we are meeting uh, the church, is to worship and praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to uh, have a couple of songs that's involving in dancing and swaying. So I'm going to ask you guys, like, to just feel comfortable, okay? Just feel comfortable, and then let's, let's dance like no one is watching, you know? So I'm going to ask you, please, please, let's dance. Let's just enjoy the presence. Okay, so we're going to, Nathaniel is coming. He's going to be on the guitar. Uh, and Ima also, all of you guys know Ima. Ima on the keyboard. And Daniel is going to be a backup. And then also Elik. You guys know Elik. And then we have uh, Nathaniela. And also myself on the drums. Okay, so it's kind of like a very equipped team when it comes to worship and praise God. Yeah. And then remember on the, uh, was it Isaiah? So in Isaiah, I think 150, verse 6, it says, Let every breath, let everything that have a breath, praise and worship God. So we're going to take this opportunity to welcome you as we worship and praise God indeed. Okay, let's go.
sing Jaira, Jaira. Jaira, you are enough. Oh, and everywhere you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. And I will be, and I will be content in every circumstance. Dear Lord, we thank you because you are enough. We bless you because we can look north, south, east, and west, and it can always come back to you. We pray that even as we lift our hearts and our voices to you this morning, that indeed that will also be enough before your throne, and that we will have a wonderful time in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may have a seat. Thank you to our worship team. Uh, before our kids go out this morning, we have a few things that we'd like to get through. Uh, but before I forget that, kwa wale ambao watapenda kusikiliza huduma kwa lugha ya Kiswahili, wanaweza kupata kuva kwa wale earphones kutoka kwa media team. Pia unaweza kuka Sehemu yeyote ndani na huduma hiyo takupikia karibuni sana. Asante Sara. We have a few things to get through this morning. A great way for us to appreciate what the Lord is doing amongst us. And we would like to start with a baby dedication. So if I can invite Joe to come up. All right, I would like to welcome Sarah and Joshua up to the stage. So that's 
I think there's a picture up there of little baby Joshua. Look how cute he is. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't stop looking this morning. While they're coming, though, and while we're applauding his cuteness, let's, I'm going to read uh, from Matthew chapter 19, verse 13 through 15. It says, Then children were brought to him that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. And so we are so excited to dedicate little Joshua this morning. Um, I'm extra excited because Sarah uh, has recently gotten saved and was baptized a couple weeks ago. And from that moment, she has been so excited and ready to dedicate her little guy. And so um, it, it just it, it touched me because it, it shows not only her love for her child, but also uh, the way that... that her excitement for what God has done in her own life also. And so uh, we're really excited to come along Sarah this morning and Joshua and to dedicate him to the Lord this morning. So I would like to welcome anybody that would um, like to come up here and maybe uh, be a part as we we pray for her this morning. I've asked a couple people to pray, but I would like to welcome any friends or family that would like to come up here this morning to, to come up as well. Yeah, we're, we're, we're so excited for her this morning. And Josh, and he's excited right now, too. He's just... No, all right. All right, um, so I'm going to have a couple of people pray. And uh, just, again, we're so thankful for this little guy. And as we're praying, we want to remember uh, just the, the gift that children are from the Lord. We see throughout Scripture that God is the high value on children and also um, a high value on, on the importance of, of, of um, raising children well. And so uh, this is a commitment from Sarah to, to do her best as a, as a mother to raise Joshua uh, in the way of, in, in, uh, to follow Christ. But also it's a commitment from each and every one of us, too, that we will come alongside her and help her and that we will do our best to, as Joshua grows and gets older, to also point him to Christ. And so we are all a part of this this morning. It's not just Sarah, but it's each and every one of us, the body of Christ, saying we are going to come alongside her and and and. Uh, assist her throughout the process. If anyone has kids, they know that you can't always do it on your own. And so that's what we're here this morning for, is we're here to say we will help her and we will help Joshua. So I'll have Trudy start off our prayers for us this morning. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and this moment that we can dedicate Joshua to you. Father, we thank you that you have given Joshua to Sarah as a gift, and you've given him to God's tribe as a gift. We pray that we would steward this gift well. I pray, God, that you'd give Sarah what she needs to parent this little one. We pray for wisdom and courage to parent in this season. We pray that you give her everything that she needs, even when she doesn't understand. May she look for what she needs in your word. May she be deeply rooted in your word. May she be established in your word. We pray that this little one will grow to know you as, your, as, her, your, as his personal savior. We pray, Father, that in early, at an early age, he will give his life to you. We want to ask, Lord, and declare over his life that he will do great exploits for you. He will do greater things for you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray the blood of Jesus over him. We pray for health and wellness over him, God, in Jesus' name. We pray even now, God, for the friends that he will have when he's older, God, that they will not lead him astray, but he will have friends that he will influence in the name of Jesus Christ. We just pray every blessing in, in heavenly realms over his life. And I want to pray, Father, as a church, may we come alongside Sarah to help her, to encourage her. Lord, may we not um, just watch even when things are not going well. 
Help us to be a real community of brothers and sisters, loving her, walking with her on this journey of parenting. And may you remind Sarah, even as we've sang, that you are Jaira, that you will provide for them, you will give them help from on high, and you will send people and angels to come alongside them. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mungu tunakushukuru kwa sayi ya sasa. Asante kwa jili ya maisha ya Joshua na Sarah. Yesu unatosha. Unatosha katika maisha ya Joshua. Asante mungu kwa kwa utamkuza sawa sawa na mapenzi yako. Utamlinda, utambariki. Utamungoza Sarah aweze kumlea katika imani ya kikristo katika neno lako. Umbariki na Sarah umlinde. Umpe maitaji ya keyote anaritaji katika kumkuza Joshua. Ili Joshua atakapo kuwa, asipote, asimame katika njia ya kweli, ya kweli wako, ya kwa Yesu Kristo. Mungu na sisi kama kanisa, tunaomba utusaidie, tuweze kumsaidia Sarah na Joshua, waweze wakakua kiroho na kimwili. Mungu utukufu sifa, heshima, za kubwana. Tunaomba hayo kupitia jina mwana umpendo Yesu Kristo, utusikie. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for Sarah and for Joshua this morning. Lord, we thank you uh, just for the excitement that we have seen from, from Sarah to be able to dedicate her little one to you, Lord. What, a, what an amazing testimony and example she is in that area. Lord, I pray that you would be with her as she, um, as she raises Joshua, Lord. I pray that you would give her wisdom, that you would give her strength, that you would give her every, everything that she needs. Uh, as she um, as she sets out to to raise him well and raise him to follow you, Lord, we anyone with kids knows that you you're never perfect all the time. But Lord, help us to realize that we are not alone. That we have you with us. That we we can also rest and rely on you as parents. And Lord, I pray that you would help her to use every opportunity to point little Joshua to you. And Lord, I pray that you would be with Joshua as he grows. I pray that you would help him, as Trudy said, even at a young age, that he would, that he would follow you. Lord, I pray that you would draw him to yourself and that you, there would be wonderful, amazing plans for Joshua that you have in the future, Lord. I, I thank you for, for his life and the gift that he is to Sarah, Lord, and to everyone here. And Lord, I pray that you would help us as a church to, to step forward and to, to help her in any way that we can, to help Joshua in any way that we can. Lord, we thank you that you've called us to be more than just acquaintances. You've called us to be friend, more than friends. You've called us to be family. Lord, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, so we're all here together, a family united through you. And for that, we are so grateful and thankful. And so, Lord, we pray. We all, again, get to share in this wonderful thing today of welcoming Joshua and, and praying your blessings over him. So, Lord, we thank you for Sarah and for Joshua. And we pray that you would just, again, lead them, guide them, protect them, and that you would have wonderful things in store for little Joshua. And, Lord, we thank you again for his life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's, yeah, give him a clap. <laughs> but, yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, we have one more to go. Uh, can I invite Frank and the youth team? We'd like to honor our graduating seniors this morning. It's for my guy in the sound booth. I had to get him there. All right. Is it nice? Yeah, that's nice. I'm thinking about putting that on my ringtone. So, <laughs> so we uh, in youth have an incredible uh, honor today. It's bittersweet um, as we have to and get to send our grade 12 students who are graduating this year on their way. Uh, they are, some have graduated already and are just finishing their exams. Some are graduating in uh, 13 days, for 12, 6 days. Uh, and so we are going to be able to honor them uh, this morning with just a little send off and prayer. So if you happen to be a graduating senior, we would love for you to come up on stage right now. Yes, 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 yes. One, 
two, three, four. All right, so this is the point in time where you guys are going to get to sing the song that you don't know and dance the dance that you've never seen. Just kidding, just kidding, just waiting for it. You can't kind of... All right, so these are our five. I think there's a, there's a couple more that may be en route. Uh, I know that service starts at 9.30. I told them to be here at 9. Some of them will be here in about a half hour. So, um, so we're just going to go through, just quickly say your name. Sorry if you didn't know you were speaking today. It's quick. Say your name and then what your future plan is if you know it. And yeah, just quick. <clears throat> My name is Arifa and I plan to do law. Yeah. My name is Joshua and I'm planning to study agricultural business. <clears throat> My name is Gideon and I plan to do entrepreneurship. My name is Micah, and I plan to study history. My name is Evelyn, and I plan to study hospitality management. All right. You get merch today, but not yet. All right, so we just have a quick verse for you guys. And some of you um, I've known for a long time because you've been here a long time. Uh, and some of you we've known just a shorter time because you've been here a shorter time. Um, as you guys, <laughs> you guys better be writing this down because there's some pearls coming out, <laughs> pearls of wisdom <laughs> coming out. To, uh, Bella. So as we go through, um, we know that you guys are on a bunch of different places in your spiritual walk. And the plans that God has for you are amazing. Um, and you guys are going to go out and change the world. Wherever you go, whatever you do. Um, and as you go out there, there is going to be a bunch of people telling you a bunch of different ways that you can do a bunch of different things, including what you should think about God. And our hope is that over the past seven years for some of you, uh, the past two years for some of you, three, four, however long you've been here, we hope that, that part of your journey as you've come through um, the youth program is that you've been able to come to be, be a, a free thinker, um, to think of your relationship with God on your terms and not on what someone else should say. But we do hope that as you go here that that is one of the things that you guys are going to stay grounded in. And so this is a verse that's pretty close to our family um, that we, that we kind of look, look at and say, yeah, this is, this is how it is when you go into the world. And so um, it's from Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Um, and it says this, it says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, right? And our prayer for you guys as you go out is that as you, as you face challenges and trials and as you go out and, and reach some of the goals that you set, right, and, and get to those milestones, um, that in all of the, that, that you would be able to keep your relationship with Christ at the center of everything that you're doing. And when you have a decision to make, um, that you wouldn't necessarily go to, to what your professor might say or what even some of your friends that you make at college might say, but that you would, you would go to God first and say, Lord, what do you want for me? And as you hear him and you listen to his voice guiding you, that you would follow it. And that would be our prayer for you. So I am going to invite uh, all of our youth leaders up. Um, parents, I'm even gonna, I'm gonna invite you guys up. Anybody who has poured in, teachers if you're here, um, to come stand behind and pray for these young people um, as we prepare to send them out into the world. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There is a reason why they don't give me a microphone very often. And this is why. This is why. Anyone else? Last chance, parting shots. Okay, so we're just gonna pass this around a little bit. If you want to pray, um, please feel free and I will close this after this. Who wants to lead off, anybody? Lead off? I see your hand in the back, I hear your hand in the back. 
<laughs> Let us pray. Father, we, we thank you for this youth. Uh, we thank you for the, the, the youth ministry in, in what they have poured into their lives, Father. And as we are uh, saying goodbye to them, Father, we just ask you, Father, to continue to be their source of joy, their source of knowledge, their source of peace, Father. Let your light shine every time that they are feeling that they're in darkness, Father. Father, we ask that your word guide them wherever they go, Father. Father, we ask you that when they feel that they are lost, they should remember that you are the source of everything for them, Father. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Father, we just ask you on behalf of these students for an outpouring of your wisdom through the Holy Spirit. We pray right now in this moment that you do that for them so that these next moments and weeks and months that they're prepared for whatever it is that comes at them, Lord, whether it's studies or the, the real world or whatever you want to call it, Father, I just pray, God, that you protect them from uh, the evil one and that your wisdom and your guidance and your life is what guides them into whatever it is that they're going to do, God. I pray that they look at the world for what it is right now in 2022 and going forward, and that they see the world through your eyes. I pray, God, that you um, bring them into um, relationship with people that they need to be into relationship with. And if there's people that are going to be in their life that need to know Jesus, I pray that they present your gospel with full um, love and perseverance and grace. I pray, God, that they are different because of you. And I pray, God, that as they um, continue in their relationships that they already have and the ones that they're going to have, that they are impacting the world for your, for your glory. Thank you so much for what they're going to study. I pray that you give them knowledge so that they can be successful and do everything that they do in their work to the glory of God. And they always live out their faith no matter what um, sphere of influence that they're living in, Father. We love you so much, and we give you all the praise, and I pray that they continue to give you all the praise, too. God, we thank you so much for uh, these students and their learning journey here at HOPAC, and uh, even before that. God, we thank you for what you've done in and through them and, and for them. And God, as they go on to continue their, their learning journey and, and, and the growth that will continue to happen in their lives, we do pray uh, the HOPAC theme verse of, uh, of the year that they would not conform to the patterns of the world, uh, but they would continue to be transformed by the renewing of their mind uh, so that they would be able to test and approve what your will is for them. Yeah, you're good, uh, you're pleasing, and you're perfect will. God, we pray for uh, your blessing over them as they go and that they would, uh, that they would know and that they would be reminded uh, often that you are with them uh, wherever they go. Uh, they can go as far down, as far up, and as far west and east, uh, and that, that you'd be there and that you are with them uh, wherever they go. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I thank you that even when we look in the Bible, you use young people again and again. You use Mary to birth Jesus and hence salvation. You use Gideon. You call David and many other young people. And most time when you call them, everyone wasn't sure, but you're sure. So we thank you that you're sure as you're sending these uh, young ones out today that they've been taught the fear of God, that they've been taught independence and confidence that comes from you. May they not lose it. And we thank you for your promises again and again in the Bible that you say in these days, young people will dream vision who dream dreams and have vision. So we thank you for the vision you've given them. As you are sending them in the marketplace, either to start entrepreneurship, to all easy management, law, agricultural engineering, anything that putting their hands into it, you can use it, God. So they're your messengers, God. We are asking Jesus that may they never lose their faith, no, their faith, no matter what is happening on the world. May they know that you are God and you are enough. We thank you that you are guiding them. You are putting the age of protection over them, and they know that their confidence, their true confidence, comes from the faith that is in our, in, our, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our Lord and Father. We thank you that you've got them, and that is enough. Lord, we're grateful for the, the lives that are represented here um, of the graduating seniors, and we're so grateful for all of the, the members of the church family that have poured into them over the years to help shape them uh, into the young people that they are today. Lord, we pray that as they go out, 
um, they would know that they don't go alone, Lord, that you promise to walk with us every step of the way. And we also just want them to know that um, as they go out, that they're still loved and prayed for um, by this congregation, and we thank you for that. Uh, as they finish up their studies and their testing, we pray that you would give them the perseverance to get through. Um, and as they get into a time of celebration, we pray that you would uh, give them wisdom as to, to how they might do that. And so we thank you for this morning. We honor the, our graduating seniors and pray that you would uh, go with them as they leave uh, this church and as they leave this country and head out to the next stage of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we do, have a we do have a little merch. Yes, clap, 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 clapping. Woohoo! I see my guy, Japheth, come on. I, I told you he would come. This is my guy. <laughs> While he's coming up, it was fun. I'm just telling you, I was talking to people in the back. I'm like, I saw Gideon, when Gideon came up, I was like, he's here, and then my last guy. So how I'm so excited right now. Um, and so this is just a, a little token. It's a little cross. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and this is just a reminder that you guys can take with you wherever you go, right? That, that when times are tough and when, when things don't make sense and, and, you know, when you're going through your homesickness because you walked all around your neighborhood and all around the city and you can't find Ugali anywhere, um, that, that there's, a, there's a group of people um, that love you and there's a God that loves you. Um, and he's just, he's there. Is anytime you need him, you just have to turn to him and ask uh, and he'll be there for you. So we love you guys and just ask for God's grace as you go out into the world. Okay, that's it. Yeah, done. Okay, um, it's time for the kids to be dismissed, but there's been a bit of a change of classrooms. So if you are in Blaze, if you are five to eight years old and normally go, go to Blaze, do not go upstairs to your classroom, your usual one. You're gonna go downstairs to classroom number 12. It's right next to the Sparks. Okay, so Blaze, you are gonna be in a new classroom from now on. You're gonna be downstairs in classroom number 12. And then upstairs in room 22 and 23 will be our Nyota and Jema classes. So they, thank you. Your kids, you're dismissed. Thank you. And today is kids worship. So you are heading to the sports classroom uh, for our kids in Blaze and Rockets. Praise God. Thank you. All right, I think we will move on to, uh, we have just uh, two quick announcements this morning. Uh, may I call Sarah? Thank you, Justin. Wanawake Oye. I didn't hear that. Wanawake Oye. Thank you, thank you. So this is the final reminder for the women's event. We don't have enough signups, so I'm hoping that this day will be the day that the rest of you will sign up. Um, you know, Tanzanians, what we like to do is call on the day of the event and say, I'm coming. So please let's do something different and something new by signing up today. Um, we have plenty of surprises in store on the 11th of June from 12 to 4 at Mimi and Sito's house. Uh, let's give them a clap for opening their home to us. There's no real agenda. We've taken your feedback and uh, implemented it in this event on Saturday whereby a lot of you have said that you want to mingle and hang out. So there'll be a lot of that and one special huge surprise. So if you like surprises, this is something you don't want to miss. I can't share much because it is a surprise. Um, and uh, one thing about surprises is that um, you just never know what's in store. All you have to do is be available uh, many years ago, I told my husband, I want a surprise party for my birthday. So that was what I was looking forward to, a surprise. 
and uh, I was very surprised. So please come through and join us. Asante <laughs> ni. Thank you, Sarah. I'm guessing I'm not invited. But our very last announcement for this morning is our recurring announcement on live groups. Uh, this is our small groups around the city uh, meeting to do life together and study. If you are not part of a live group and you would like to be, we highly recommend it. Uh, so please do see me or any of the leaders and we will try and connect you with a live group. Shall we have a quick word of prayer as we proceed to our time of offering? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy in our lives. We thank you that in your abundance, you have also taken care of every need uh, that we could ever ask or imagine. So as we come to you this morning uh, to give of our hearts generously, we pray that you will bless it and you will let it honor the works that you are doing even amongst us. In Jesus' name. We have offering baskets up here, and we also have means to give electronically. Please uh, feel free to give as you are so led. Karibu uh, sana. ask for us to stand please as we continue to worship God
as we remember the Pentecost day today, we thank our Heavenly Father for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. Father God, thank you for the Holy Spirit who is present even right now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us, who speaks to us, who reminds us of the Word of God even when we forget or we are about to make decisions which are not aligned to the Word of God. This morning, Holy Spirit, we pray that you may speak to each and every one of us, speak to the youth in this place, speak to the adults, speak to the old people. We pray that as the word of God is going to be shared, that we are going to hear you clearly and that you continue to fill this church with your presence, with your power, with everything. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of you this morning to hear the word of God. And I also would like to specifically welcome our visitors just want to tell you that you feel at home. We really are always excited to receive visitors and uh, what we always anchored here at Ghost Tribe with the Word of God and all other forms of worship that you have seen today. And um, also like to welcome those who are going to join us online, whether now, live, or anytime uh, in the future. The Bible tells us that when two or more are gathered in his name, then he's also present. So I would like to assure you that this morning, God is with us here through his Holy Spirit. Amen. So we are going to continue with our second round or second part of the series of uh, the book of Revelation. And uh, today we are going to, or we are going to cover the church in Sardis. Last week, we went through the church in Thyatira, and today we are going to go through the church in service. And um, the title of the service or of this ceremony is the wedding to a dead church. So we are going to read from Revelation 3 from verse 1 to verse number we do that our heads and pray Heavenly Father we thank you for this day the fact that we are here together in your name Father we thank you and we pray that your word is going to reveal here today that we are going to be healed by your word but we are going also to be guided by your word Father we pray that each every one of us Father is going to be strengthened by hearing this message Father we pray that you heal those who are not well, Father. We pray that even those who are spiritually struggling or spiritually dead, Father, we pray that your word is going to keep them alive. It's going to strengthen them. It's going to quicken them so that they worship you with Almighty. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to, to read, and I would like to ask you to, to follow this in your Bibles or... or through the projection there. The Bible says, To the angel in the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthens what remains. It is a for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not work up, I'll come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I'll come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not sold their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white. So we, we, we have seen a similar pattern of the message that Jesus is sending to these churches. 
that is starting by first addressing the church and identifies himself. And then he defines the things he knows about that church. And then he addresses the challenge and gives a reproach. And then finally he followed by giving a promise. So we have seen this through the other churches. And as we remember, the church in Ephesus was known for being labored and not fainting. And also separating themselves from what was was yeah. wrong, what was, was wicked, like, like false teachers. But it was ad 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 admonished for having forsaken his love. And then later we went through the church in Smyrna, which was admired for its tribulations and poverty, but also uh, forecasted to suffer persecutions. The Pergamon had known this for allowing false teachers that was a first teaching that was promoting idolatry and immorality. And then last week we saw Kaya Tyra, which was also uh, admonished for tolerating teachings, teachings of the first uh, prophetess Jezebel. And today we have seen that this church in Sardis is uh, admonished, admonished for being dead. It is cautioned to fortify self and return to God through repentance. So, The story that we are going to cover today, or the, the letter that we are going to cover today, looks like it's one of the, the most saddest. When you look at this church, the way they are told that they are dead, if you compare the message that was sent to other churches, you find that this is the church that was in the, 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 the poorest conditions. Different from the one that is sent to Smyrna, which God has nothing to, to blame them, other than say, you know, you're doing well, I know you're suffering persecution, and persecution will continue to come, but here, he has nothing good to say about them. And it's a story that is going to show how pride can lead to death. I remember uh, in Proverbs 16, verse 18, uh, the, the, it reminds us that pride goes before destruction, and the haughty or arrogant spirit before the fall. Why do I mention this? It's because among all the churches you find that the church in Sardis was the one that was enjoying peace. It was the one that had the best reputation. When I say reputation, as Jesus said, when he said that, when he mentioned that, he says, I know your deeds, or I know your works. You have a reputation of being alive. That means everyone else, when they look at this church in service, they see a great church. That means they have a great, you know, sort of the way they run their church, they worship, you know, everything looks extremely nice. But he's telling them that you're dead. So it's a story that's standing at the warning of those who think that they can stand before God closed in their own righteousness. And this is a big problem when we, we look at, uh, at churches in developed communities. You know, uh, you find that as the year goes, you find the churches that have great reputations for, for you know, bringing people uh, to Christ, for revival, Know, for, 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 for being known for what they did uh, to the kingdom, and then years later you find those things are kind of lost in those churches, slowly are dying. We'll see some few examples of that. Um, statistics says that uh, in, the, in the continent you find that in every year there are more than 10,000 people of churches that are closed out, that are dying. And uh, you find the church plants is something like maybe two, three thousand in a year. That means there are more churches that are, are dying than the churches that are being uh, formed or being planted. And if you look at the, the churches in the developed communities, like if you go to Europe, it's sad to see a lot of churches now attending to mosques. 
we find churches uh, recently when we attended um, the, 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 the leaders conference in the UK I saw a beautiful church it looks outside at a beautiful church and I was like wow this is a beautiful and then when I saw it was actually a nightclub that building is now turned to a nightclub and it was very sad to find that these were the churches in the past that they were enjoying the fullness of God. They were enjoying uh, bringing people to the kingdom of God. But now they've been turned to something else. And this is why. This is because people start to depend on themselves because of this, the material uh, richness. You find in the countries, uh, when you go to some countries, you find that they, they, they don't feel that they need God anymore because they have everything. And this is what happened to service, that they started changing to their environment. Actually, among all these places that we've been seeing, all these cities that this church, these letters have been addressed, we find that service was one of the, of the powerful, but also with the richest among the, 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 the other cities. Why? Because uh, actually coins were invented in service. One of the examples that I learned is that there was a time that there was an earthquake. So, because all these, uh, all these cities were under the Roman occupation, they were supposed to pay tax. And during that time, they were told, we are going to allow you not to pay tax for, for the period of one year so that you can rebuild your town. And they did not accept. They say, no, we are going to continue to pay tax as usual because they were that reach. So at the end of the day, they find themselves uh, as a church turning to be more uh, satisfied with what they have physically, but uh, forgetting that they have to submit to God. They have also to depend on God. Also, the story of Hadis reminds us the saying that appearances can be deceiving. Sometimes we see something or we see someone and because of the appearance, we think these people have it all together. You know, sometimes we see this uh, uh, apostle or sometimes we see this man of God, the way they appear, the way they talk, and immediately we, we, we just qualify them to be the real deal without really following them and knowing that what are they teaching. You know, even churches, I've been to churches, uh, one of the churches that uh, was a surprise for me in Nigeria uh, when I traveled for my work and then this day I went to this church, which, which was really, very nice church. You know, having buses going to every part of the city, different campuses, bringing students and, and, and it's amazing, you know. But immediately when they started the teachings is when I realized that I'm in a wrong place. But when you look outside the building, the people, the way they, people are, are, are you know, wearing as if you know, they are coming to, 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 to build pageant or you know, gentleman competition of who looks nicer than the other. You know? But it was just the appearances from outside. I remember looking at the, the offering. You know? There were about ATMs outside and, and machines for people who come with cards and the matching of the offering with big barrels the people are giving. But for me, I looked and said, if, if this is what they are teaching, then, 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 then they're in trouble. Because everyone who come there, instead of looking on, on the inside, the spiritual side of the church, they look on the appearances and what is outside. But remember, um, this is very possible for the church, but also for individuals that they look up, uh, alive outside, but inside spiritually, they are dead. And, and individuals uh, in, in, in the Bible, they are called uh, gospel hypocrites, or actors, people who, who look like they're wearing a mask. You know, they perform, you know, whatever is related to the church. It's just a performance, but inside they have other motives. And, uh, in Matthew 23, verse 27 to 28, Jesus is rebuking, rebuking the scribes and Pharisees when he says, Woe well to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but uh, within are full of dead people's bones 
and uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy. So we need to be aware of that. And another thing is in this church is the fact that there was something different the way he addresses to this church. When he says, I know your deeds, it's like he's saying, I know your works. The same thing he's saying to other churches, but in other churches, he's saying, I know your works and I'm pleased with what you're doing. But here he's not saying anything like that. He's actually saying the opposite. He's saying, I know your works and, you know, you are dead. Even though you have a reputation of being alive, not a past tense, this is a presence present tense that you have a reputation of being alive. So we always have to be mindful of the appearances. So he failed to prevent anything other than pronouncing them dead. That means they were stagnant. That means they were you know kind of uh, kind of like draw back from, from what they used to be. Because you know all these churches were formed during the, the time when when when, uh, when when Paul was ministering in Asia Minor and there were vibrant churches that were formed by true believers. But with generation things changes. With generation you find uh, the, the, the gospel is kind of started to be watered down. They started to mix things that are pleasing the community. They are starting to accept things so that they can look also like what communities order them to be. And that's what we see in many churches around us. We find people are changing even the way they, 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 they explain some of the scriptures so that they can fit uh, what the community want to hear. Accepting things that are wrong. And this is a result, uh, in this church is a result of, of the peace that was there. You know, sometimes peace can be deceiving. Peace can, 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 can make you uh, being unaware of what, can, 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 what is happening in your own house. So that's what happened in the church in service. Luke 6, verse 26 is saying, uh, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the first prophets. So it's, it's reminding us that even though they have a good reputation, that means people are lauding them. People are saying, yes, this is a great church, but they were, what Luke is saying here is that even their fathers say the same to the false prophets, even though they knew that these are false prophets. So, so sometimes when people are applauding you, you need to be aware. Sometimes they, they don't mean what they say. So you might be asking yourself, why were they dead? Why did Jesus told them that they are dead? The cause of this is the thing. Anywhere, you know, and we, 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 we really know about that and it's not a shock to find that the cause of death is sin. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. This is in Romans 6, but also in James chapter 1, 14 uh, to 15, the Bible says that each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Sin when it's full birth to death. So it all starts with sin within the church. When you start tolerating sin within the church, then it leads to death. So this is, we, we are not told exactly what sin this church was suffering, but the Bible tells us that the source of death is usually sin. So another question that you might be asking yourself is that could this church in Sardis be revived again? The answer is yes. There is still hope in this church in service, according to, to what we have read. Uh, that Christ, first of all, is introducing himself to this church as the one who has the seven spirits of God, which means that he is the only one with the authority uh, 
by, by whose authority the Spirit of God in all his fullness gathers, defends, and preserves the body of Christ. That we are, as a body of Christ, depend on Jesus Christ himself for our healthy and for our well-being as a church. That means the word of God not only ministers life to those who are spiritually dead, the same as the word of God has been ministering life to the church in Sardis, but it's also strengthened the lives of those, who Christ, I mean those, of those whom Christ has already made alive. So, so we, we, we need the word of God as, uh, as a human needs water. Without water, you know, we, we, we can consider ourselves uh, weak and, and at the end of the day uh, dies. So, so we need the word of God. We need the word of God. If you are a, a true believer or if you are uh, a believer who is going to that route of the church in Sardis, we all need the word of God. And this can always strengthen and this can always bring life. So, in verse 2 to verse 3, we, lead, we, 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 we read um, the commands that he's giving to this church. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time, though the time is not on our side, to read these commands. So there are five commands. In verse 2, we told them to wake up or to be watchful and to strengthen the things which remains. And in verse 3, added that they must remember what they've received and, hold and heard, to hold them fast to those things and also to repent. So we are going to start with the first one. He's telling them, wake up or be watchful. This gives me, you know, the, the, the way Jesus, in, in, during his ministry, the way he was raising the dead. You remember uh, when, when he raised um, Lazarus, but also when he raised uh, the girl, when he told them, wake up, and then they come to life. That means his word has power to raise the dead. In other words, Christ is asking this church, Christ is asking you, is asking God's tribe, is asking me to perform a diagnostic examination in medical terms. You need to do checkups for your health. It's the same that we need to do checkup for our spirit, for our spiritual health. Are we still walking in faith? Do we have a good relationship with the Lord? Do we pray? Are we advocates of the resurrected Jesus Christ? Are we representing well in our workplaces? As a church, are we preaching the true word of God boldly without fearing what people are saying? As a church, are we reaching the unreached? Are we reaching the weak and the poor? As a church, are we really bringing up our leaders and are we really strengthening our children and our youth to know the word of God? So those are diagnostics that we need to do um, for ourselves as a church but also as individuals. Jeremiah 17, verse number 9, the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperate to wicked. Who can know it? Sometimes we might think we are doing well. Sometimes we genuinely think that we are doing well, but we don't know what is in our heart. Sometimes our heart is pulling us away from God. The devil is busy trying to get us out of the way so that he can rule us into some things that are not right with God. The same thing that he did to the Garden of Eden, he's still doing it up to now. So without asking ourselves, without doing this diagnosis, we might not know, and we might not know that we are in danger. It's the same as our health. You know, I'm from the medical background, and I always tell people, check your health. You might not know what you are suffering. By checking it now, you might prevent something that can occur many years to come. Diseases like cancer, diseases like hypertension, diabetes can all be prevented. 
if we do regular checkups. But a lot of us, we always wait until it's too late. So it's the same as our spiritual health. We need to constantly, continuously do this checkup to see if we are in line with what God wants us to be. Amen? Not only for ourselves, but even for our neighbors, even for our friends, even for our spouses, even for our children. We always have to, to have that eye of looking at them and, and try to correct some of the things that we think that they are not right. In our men's prayer, um, men's barbecue a couple of weeks ago, we covered a topic called, actually a week ago, called unity. And we said it's very, very important to be there for one another as men in unity by asking someone, what can I pray for you? Things, small things like those. If you see someone is struggling, someone is doing something that you think this is, is not the, the, the character that I used to know this person. It's not coming to church on time. Sometimes they don't come to church. Sometimes they don't attend, you know, uh, the, 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 the life groups. Just take time to ask them, what are they struggling with? So we need always to be mindful of that. Spiritual diagnosis, to wake up. And uh, the second is to strengthen what remains and is about to die. So here, Jesus is telling this church that whatever small that is remain, because he said there are some few people who are still doing fine, but he's telling them if you don't do something, even these are going to be corrupted. It's the same thing. If we tolerate sin in the church here at Ghost Tribe, then we are allowing or we are giving room for people also to be corrupted to think that this is the, the way things are going. It's fine because someone is doing that. Someone is doing that, so it's okay. So we need to be careful about preserving the good that we have. Preserving the good that we have. And also, is telling them to remember what they have received and heard. What they have received and heard. Here in church, we always preach the word of God. And this command is for us to remember the promises of the word of God. It's the same thing that he told the church in Ephesus, saying, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works that you did at first. So we always have to remember what you have received and what we have heard. There is always the Spirit of God that is working in his church, which is powered by the word that we receive every time we come here. But we also believe that you read your Bible. And whatever the Bible tells you, you need to hold it fast. You need to remember it. Amen? There are so many promises of, 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 the, of the Bible. I, mean, I might not be able to go through them all, but some of them is the fact that God delights in the obedience of his children. That means when we are obedient to his word, he delights in us. The Bible tells us God order the steps of those who, um, who trust in him, and he is delighted in them. Amen? But the Bible also tells us that in nature, we, we are born in sin. But because he loves us, he sent his son to die on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. And he's not going to come and hold back for our sins once we believe in him. Amen? So these are good promises that we need to know them. There are so many of them, but we, we won't be able to know them if we don't read the Bible and if we don't read the Word of God and if we don't discuss the Word of God in our small groups. That's why we're always urging you to join the small groups. Holding it fast means develop and maintain the, the, the spiritual loyalty, to be loyal to the Word of God, to be loyal to the things of the Spirit. There are so many things can keep us busy in our lives. It's a busy life. Sometimes you find yourself that you do so many things and you have excuse to the things of the spirit because you are busy with your worldly 
commitments and work and everything, looking for, for the things of the world. But we also have to be mindful of the things of the Spirit. We need to hold them fast. Amen? And finally, he's telling them to repent. He's saying, repent. This means to change their attitude on how they've been living. To repent doesn't mean just to say, God, I'm sorry, I did something wrong. It's always, you know, I'm, I'm going to put my daughter on the spot. She always likes to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And sometimes tell her, it doesn't help to say, I'm sorry. If you did the same thing yesterday and they said, I'm sorry. It's the same thing we do. We tell God that I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But to repent doesn't, to repent is supposed to be to turn 360 degree and stop doing what you have been doing. Stop those things that are, are wrong. You know, the thing that they make the spirit sad. Amen? We need to stop and turn the other way and do the thing that are going to please God. So there are so many characteristics of a repentant church that I'm not going to have time to go through them, but we need to, to know that a church always need to do diagnostic on the, the spiritual well-being. Us as individuals, we need to do diagnostic and we need to repent whenever or wherever, uh, uh, whatever we have, we have done wrong. Because in this life, we always do something wrong. Always. Because this...
The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 30, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. So this is just a reminder to examine yourself before you partake uh, from the table. We have a number of stations down and also at the back, so feel free to go to a station that is closer to you. Take the elements and then we'll pray together and take the elements together. Welcome. Understand. So we observe, we observe the Lord's Supper in anticipation of Jesus' return. And we are looking forward to that time when we will celebrate with him in his great banquet table. In Matthew 26, chapter 26, I mean verse 26 to 28, the Bible says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Let us take the bread. And when he had given thanks, then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink the juice. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the reminder of the death of your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross and the salvation that you have given us by your grace. We thank you that you are so mindful of us. We thank you that you are so faithful, Father. We thank you that we will always look to you in every situation of our lives, Father. And even as we partake the, the bread and the juice this morning, Father, we just want you to touch our lives, Father, so that we continue to be in you, Father, that we continue as a church, as individuals, to always look into you, Father. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Sode. Uh, this brings us to the end of our service this morning. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, as we close, just a reminder that a number of us will be right uh, in the front here on my right-hand side, uh, praying together. So if you'd like to join us in prayer, uh, you are very welcome. And we have some snacks uh, in the banda as well. Uh, so please join us for some time of fellowship. Don't forget the ladies' event coming up on Saturday. Let's share the grace together before we go. Well, I think we can share it without seeing it. So let's go ahead. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week.